Hey, we're at the Gen Arts booth, and we're going to check out Sapphire. They've got a new version coming out with some new features. I have the co-founder, Gary, here. Gary, can you run through some of the new features that are coming out in Sapphire 8? Sure. Uh, specifically, the builder. Yeah. Uh, well, let's see. First... I'll uh, hold the mic for you. Okay. <laughs> um, so Sapphire is a package of about 250 visual effects plugins. All right. Uh, we do everything from lighting effects to distortions, temporal effects, utility things like debanding, okay. transitions. It's, it's a whole suite of effects that, that works really well together. Um, we plug into everything from After Effects to Premiere to Media Composer to Smoke to Resolve. Everybody. Uh, spot pretty on. much everybody. Okay. Um, we've been in business for about 17 years and we, do, we try with every release to add some new effects, update some effects, and add some new cool workflow features. And so Sapphire 8, we added five new effects. Um, I'll, I can show you some of those. Okay. But the, the, the big new thing we did in Sapphire 8 is add Sapphire Builder. And what that does is put the tools in the hands of artists, right? So we've got 250 effects in the package. Right. Um, we get tons of user requests for new effects, and we have all these cool ideas ourselves. But if we turned every one of those into a plugin, we'd have like 3,000 plugins. Right. <laughs> so we thought, all right, how, how be can a UI we... nightmare. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so we thought, all right, how can we take this to the next level? What if we just make one plugin called S Effect that can turn into anything? Okay. And then what if we let users build their own effects inside that with a with a node graph? It's a cool idea, but I imagine that's hard to pull off coding wise. It, it took us <laughs> it took us a lot of work. Yeah. Um, but uh, I I think we did a good job. Okay. And people seem to be really enjoying it. So uh, you're able to you just got able to build how well you're able to show us exactly I, how I easy it is to you. build something. That'd yeah. be awesome. But basically. Uh, once you once you create a builder effect, which is composed of all the other Sapphire effects, so like you can yeah. have a glow and a vignette and a kaleido and a okay. whatever you want, um, you can make these things really complex or you can keep them simple. You save that as a preset, and then uh, anybody anywhere in the world can take that preset and just apply it to a clip really okay. simply. So for instance, uh, uh, somebody can define a look for a show that's you know that's got all this complex stuff in it right they can define that hide all the parameters except for just the two key ones okay send that around to everybody else at the facility and then all those folks have to do is just drag it on drag it on so you just export on. that as a file that, exactly yeah, okay right cool. and then it automatically shows up as okay. a preset all right well let's take a look at building one of these and see how it actually works i'd be happy to so here we are we got after effects um with sapphire in it and as I said, Sapphire is a package of 250 effects. They show up right in the effects menu, just like any other built-in After Effects okay. effects, right? Um, and they're all categorized in the same way, so you, they're they're pretty they're easy to GPU find. They're all GPU accelerated too, right? They're all GPU accelerated, or um, if you don't have a GPU or, or a, a CUDA GPU, they're multi-threaded. Okay. So these are running actually on a Mac, a trash can Mac, so they're they're using all the CPUs, so they're oh, still pretty fast. Great. Um, so Builder is in its own category. There's two versions, actually. There's S Effect and there's S Transition. Because uh, a lot of people want effect-based transitions nowadays. Right. So again, we thought, let's why don't we just build a transition that can be anything, and then let people build it themselves. Okay. But, but now I'll just focus on S Effect. All right. All right, so we'll pop that on. There it is. When you push, first put it on, it, it does nothing. It has almost no parameters. Uh, it's it's sort of ready to be turned into something. So the first thing I'll show you is that you can load presets straight into it. Okay. And this is cool because um, sometimes you don't know the effect you're looking for. Um, you just say, I want something kind of glowy. So we bring up the preset browser, and the cool thing is now you can see all of the glowy looking presets. And there's hundreds of them. They're not all our glow effect, right? Some are glow dark, some are streak, some are edge flash. I'll just type red there. That filters it down. Okay. And um, so let's say maybe I like that one, the cinnamon toastery look, right? So I just load that back up, and back in After Effects, here I am. I've got all the parameters for film effect, which is what we're actually using under the hood here. And you can see as I play that through, it's got that really nice sort of soft focus, uh, red glowy look. Right. So that's step one preset browser. 
But now what's really cool is that we can edit that effect. Okay. And now we can really go to town. Looks node-based there, right? It's a node-based compositor inside After Effects. Okay. Or inside Avid, which is even more exciting or, yeah, for a lot wherever. of people. <laughs> right? So let's say, just to pick something simple, uh, let's say we want to add a vignette to this look, so it's it's got the glow and the soft and, and the grain and everything from film effect, right. but also has some vignette. So I'll just I like to type, so I'll just type up there, drag the vignette down, and now we've got a vignette with a film effect. All right. Right. And if I wanted to change the order, I can easily do that. Now I've got film effect followed by the vignette. Right. Maybe some rays. Right. So I'll pop that on at the end and brighten those, you know, lengthen the rays out a little bit, brighten them up. And now we've got a really cool sort of overall look for, say, a promo or an intro. So now if I say, OK, I'm back into After Effects. OK. And I've got all the parameters for all those effects, right? right. And so it's completely customizable. Sometimes that's not what you want, right? You'd, you'd like to sort of save it out so that other people can use it in a simplified way. And, and that's what this column over here to the right is. So this is the parameter publishing column. Okay. So let's say I'll, I won't publish anything in Film Effect, and I'll publish for the vignette just the center and the radius. And then for the rays, I'll hide everything except for, again, the center and the rays length. Right? Oh, so you get, all right, cool. Right? And now when I go back into After Effects, I've got this beautiful, simple, brand new effect that no one's ever seen before. And I can easily just sort of tweak the center, move it around, um, and get basically the effect that I'm looking for. Cool. I can save that out, put it on a file share, um, share it with my friends, um, and even take the same preset to an Avid and get exactly the same look out of it. That reminds me of another feature in Sapphire 8, which is that when you buy a Sapphire license mm -hmm. for Avid, you can also use it on After Effects and Premiere on that same machine. Okay. As well as Resolve so and it's any other OFX a license host. per machine, no matter what software you have. Right. Okay. Um, the Avid license is, is a tier two, so at, tier one is After Effects, Premiere, all OFX, and Smoke on Mac. Okay. So those all share, and then tier two includes Avid as well as those, and then tier three includes all of those plus Flame. Okay. And we also, speaking of licensing, we also have a subscription option for Adobe. Okay. Um, so, uh, so much lower cost, four ninety nine a year subscription option. Okay. And now, so, so yeah. now, uh, like I said before, I know you guys have been around for a long time. I haven't used any of your preset, uh, any of your effects at all. Okay. So, and I'm sure there might be some of the people who are viewing who haven't used them either. Could you just give a quick rundown of some of the key effects that uh, sure. that you have in your suite? I'd be happy to. Um, one that people really love is the lens flare. It's super customizable, it's easy to use, it renders really fast. Um, it's totally controllable, so there's dozens of parameters. But you don't have to use the parameters. You can just basically grab it, move it around, squash it so you get that anamorphic look, whatever you like. Um, it does have um, hundreds of presets, both natural and over the top. You okay. know, there's, there's a bunch that so are for made motion from graphics, or if you're looking for a nice sun, to yep. uh, uh, exactly. you know. Okay. But there's also, uh, you know, ones made from real lenses. Okay. As well. So, um, so and, and what's really cool is that you can edit the lens. So okay. Can, we actually have a lens flare designer as part okay. of the package. So um, you can, yeah, you can add glints and caustics and everything. Yeah, exactly. And I won't go into the details. Okay. There, cool. But, uh, we have an effect called Beauty, which is, uh, I don't know if you'll see it on the video, but it's a simple skin softener, uh, skin softener beauty okay. effect. It's using our uh, proprietary edge-aware blurring. Okay. So what that means is that you don't have to pull a very good mat. Um, you can sort of pull an approximate mat, and it'll, it'll soften the skin tones without losing any resolution in uh, you know the eyes and the teeth right. and so on. Those right. problem areas are eyelashes, and, eyebrows. Exactly, right. Okay. So because it's edge aware, it notices those edges and doesn't blur over them. Okay. Digital damage is a new effect in V8. Oh, so uh, you can create a nice easy glitch there. Yep. Just literally pop it on, it auto animates like that. Um, and then of course everything is totally controllable as well. Um, we have a lot of damage effects actually. If you just search for damage, you'll see um, 
We've also got film damage, JPEG damage, and TV damage. Okay. TV damage is more like analog TV. Cool. Half tone, half tone color, um, kaleidoscopes. There's a whole suite of kaleidoscopes that are really nice. Um, we always aim to really keep the quality high, so everything is fully anti-aliased, even if you zoom way out. Um, there's a zap effect, which I, uh, which is used in uh, Iron Man um, and The Matrix and a bunch of others. Again, you just pop it on. I, this may not be the oh, best. Use it. a Bezier curve in order to uh, animate that. Exactly. Uh, It'll also work straight off of an After Effects spline. So if you just have an After Effects path, It'll just lock to it. Okay. And then it auto animates too. I'm guessing you can set all those parameters. And, totally. And uh, if you want branches more exact, and all that, yeah. Okay. Yep, exactly. Everything is controlled right from here. Um, I like to maybe turn down the bolt width a little bit to get it fine. Uh, vary the endpoint. So now I've got a whole bunch of zaps all sort of wiggling around. All right, that's pretty. That's a pretty awesome thing. You have a lot more that you can show. Uh, us here today. Where can people find more information or download a free trial? You can get a free trial straight from our website, genarts.com. All right. And thank you very much. Yep. Thanks, Gary. Appreciate it. Thanks for your time. You're very welcome. Thanks to our sponsors for making our NAB coverage possible.